The story begins with Do He, our main character, running scared on one misty night. She always feels like her life is uncertain, like navigating through a foggy night. As a man approaches, she wonders if he'll be a friend or foe, and hopes he can help her. The scene shifts to a flashback to 200 years ago in the Joseon era, where a group of believers is praying at night. Suddenly, a demon appears in front of them. He blows up the candles and causes chaos. The demon, Jung Gu Wan, leaves a red rose and makes a fiery exit. Jung Gu Wan used to be human, but he somehow turned into a demon. He has wandered the earth for many years. He makes deals with desperate people, granting their wishes for 10 years, after which their souls will be sent to hell. Gu Wan sees himself as an external force who gives value to those destined for misery. Later, Gu Wan meets a hungry man, Pak Bok Yu, at the port during a famine. Gu Wan tempts him with a fish and offers a deal. He reveals he's a demon and promises wealth for the next 10 years in exchange for Bok Yu's soul. The hungry man excitedly agrees and signs a blood contract. Back in the present, Do He is attending the 2023 Korea CEO Awards, where she wins the prestigious CEO Award of the Year. Do He is a rich heiress and part of the Mirai Group, one of Korea's top beverage companies. A few days later, her secretary Shin brings concerning news about an article. It's revealed that someone has published bad news about Do He's work on their newly launched beverage. She believes someone from within the company is trying to seize power from her, so she asks Shin to investigate and report back. Dohee also attempts to use this grave situation to get out of a blind date set up by her grandmother and chairwoman of Mirai Group, Ju Chan Suk. Sadly, her attempt doesn't work. Her grandmother insists on Dohee attending the date, threatening to skip her health checkup if she doesn't. With no other option, Dohee goes to the hotel where the date is set to happen, promising to stay for at least 30 minutes to avoid being rude. Meanwhile, Gu Wan, who continues to fulfill people's grants, realizes that the time is up for one of the contracts. This time, the man is the leader of a mafia group. But when Gu Wan arrives to take the gangster's soul, he's unwilling to accept his fate. He attempts to fight and negotiate for a new contract, but Gu Wan declines. Our demon hero points out that the gangster gained power and wealth during the 10 years. Shortly after, Gu Wan takes the gangster's soul by using his power. He then stages the death as an accident. After the man passes away, Gu Wan flees the scene, but he's noticed by one of the mafia members. In the meantime, there happens to be a mix-up with Do He's date. As a result, she ends up at the wrong hotel, where she encounters Gu Wan, who is busy indulging himself. Our handsome demon is puzzled when Do He claims they're supposed to be on a date. Due to the misunderstanding, the more they try to talk, the more frustrated they become. Gu Wan just wants to stay in peace, while Do He wants to figure out why this man is so rude and indifferent. They then realize that they haven't even introduced themselves, so Do He hands her card to Gu Wan. Initially hesitant, Gu Wan eventually gives her his card. It is then revealed that Gu Wan, when not working as a demon and soul taker, runs the Sun Wool Foundation an organization that supports traditional artists. When Do He's 30 minutes ends, she decides to leave the place. As she leaves, she unintentionally bumps into the mafia men, who have arrived at the hotel to avenge their leader's death. At the same time, a waiter is bringing over Gu Wan's favorite cake for him. Filled with vengeance, the mafia men attempt to throw away the cake. In the ensuing chaos, Gu Wan swiftly saves his cake while Do He excuses herself to the restroom. While Do He is in the restroom, Gu Wan deals with the mafia men using his powers. He traps them inside a newspaper, but later lets them go, annoyed that they ruined his cake and interrupted his peaceful time. When Do He returns, she orders him to be less rude if they ever meet again. On her way back, Do He questions how her grandmother could set her up with such a rude person. She talks to Shin about the article, and Shin reveals that No Su An, the CEO of Mirai Group's subsidiary company, Mirai Apparel, is behind it. Do He is disappointed that someone in her family is always against her. It's revealed that Do He was actually adopted by Chun Suk after her parents' death. 
The family comprises Chun Suk's son, No Suk Min, CEO of Mirai Electronics, his wife, Kim Se Ra, managing director of Mirai Electronics, and their shy son, No Do Gyang. There's also Chun Suk's daughter, No Su An, with her twin sons, and Ju Syuk Hoon, the nephew. Chun Suk, the grandmother, only trusts Do He, much to the frustration of other family members. During the ride back home, Do He receives a mysterious call from the company's finance head, Mr. Cha, claiming to have information that could make her the Mirai Group chairwoman. She then gets a cryptic goodbye message from Grandma Chun Suk, leading her to rush to the hospital. Do He is annoyed to discover it's just a prank. Grandma Chun Suk wants to celebrate Do He's birthday. We learn that Do He's parents died on her birthday 20 years ago causing her to stop celebrating. Grandma Chun Suk wants Do He to find someone to be there for her after she's gone. So she gifts Do He two rings, one for her future partner and one for herself. Do He patiently explains that she doesn't wish to get married. Just then, Shin interrupts them and announces that Do He mistakenly went to the wrong date. Meanwhile, Gu Wan continues managing his foundation with Pak Bok Yu the same fisherman from the Joseon era, and Ga Young, who is also from the same era, by his side. After talking with the grandmother, Do He visits the beach, reminiscing about her parents and the last time they celebrated her birthday. Elsewhere, the finance manager, who called Do He earlier claiming to have information, is mysteriously attacked and killed. After spending the day at the beach, Do He calls for a driver through an app. She gets into the vehicle and doesn't notice any inconvenience yet. However, the driver turns out to be the man who killed the finance officer. Do He notices there's something wrong when she gets a message from the driver app on her phone. The app says that her actual driver is still miles away. Realizing trouble, she tries to stay calm and asks the driver who he is. The man suddenly stops the car telling her to ask why she's about to die instead. He cryptically reveals it's because of Grandma Chun Suk and attempts to knock her out using a chloroform-dipped handkerchief. Our clever heroine pretends to have fainted, and when the right time comes, she manages to get out of the car. In the meantime, Gu Wan, in search of a new target from a clock tower, senses her desperate need to be saved. He then teleports to her location, Do He pleads for his help, believing he's her best chance at survival. Gu Wan explains he can assist only if she agrees to a contract of 10 years. Left with no choice, Do He agrees to the deal. However, due to the urgency, Gu Wan decides to confront the murderous man before finalizing the contract. As Gu Wan fights the man and knocks him out, Do He seeks shelter under a bridge. Gu Wan approaches to help her but the man regains consciousness and drives the car toward them. Gu Wan then attempts to teleport them, but his power suddenly doesn't work. At the same time, Do He slips from his grasp, while Gu Wan, after realizing his power isn't working, jumps in with her. Consequently, they both fall into the water below. Inside the water, Do He regains consciousness first and tries to rescue Gu Wan by clutching his wrist. However, she struggles to lift him to the surface. During the process, the demon mark on Gu Wan's hand mysteriously transfers to hers. Some time later, the pair wakes up ashore, and Do He is relieved they're alive. Just then, Gu Wan notices that his demon mark is gone. He is shocked to see it on Do He's hand. Do He suddenly faints, therefore, Gu Wan takes her to the hospital. When Do He wakes up, they realize somehow Gu Wan's tattoo ended up on her hand, giving her all his powers. Gu Wan can only use these powers by touching Do He's hand. When Gu Wan tells her about the tattoo and its abilities, Do He thinks he's just bluffing, so she ignores him. Poor Gu Wan returns to his apartment and tells his situation to Pak Bok Yu, who also works as his butler. After an investigation, Bok Yu learns about the serious consequences if Gu Wan doesn't make a new deal with humans. It turns out that if Gu Wan fails to make contracts, he will eventually combust and die. Left with no choice, our hero heads out to look for desperate people to fulfill their needs in exchange for their souls 10 years later. 
However, without his powers, he miserably fails to make a deal with a wrestler who has multiple opponents. In the meantime, Dohi, who is back on her feet, goes to the hospital where her grandma's being treated. She assists her grandma back home after she's discharged from the hospital. Her grandma got a clean bill of health, making Dohi feel relieved. At home, Dohi tells her grandma about the mysterious call from the company's finance head. She then asks Grandma Chun Suk if she's hiding something. Chun Suk says she's open about family matters, but not business. She tries to distract Do He with jokes, and Do He believes her, even though her facial expression suggests she might be keeping something secret. The situation seems suspicious, especially concerning Do He's parents' death, because it's revealed that Chun Suk was present when their car exploded. During their talk, Seon Hook, Chun Suk's nephew, comes with a company report. We learn that Seon Hook likes Do He, and Grandma Chun Suk casually suggests they marry. Both Do He and Seok Hoon find this ridiculous and leave quickly. Later, Do He confronts No Su An, Chun Suk's daughter, who is trying to harm Do He's public image with negative articles about her products. But Do He cleverly turns the tables by threatening to expose Su An's extramarital affairs, causing the latter to take down the negative articles. In the meantime, Gu Wan realizes that he needs Do He's help to get back his powers. So he plans to woo her with his charming face. He manages to get her attention and take her to the riverside. He then attempts to drown her by throwing her into the water so that he can recreate the scene from the day his tattoo got transferred to her. Sadly, his plan doesn't work out. Feeling humiliated, Dohee throws money at him, saying she doesn't owe him anything, that he doesn't have the right to treat her harshly just because he saved her life. Dohee angrily leaves, and Gu Wan is left feeling sorry. While going home, Dohee's almost attacked with acid, but thankfully Gu Wan quickly saves her. Sadly, he gets hurt in the process. His actions deeply impact Dohee, and she thinks to herself about how his presence has changed everything in her life. This is when the tattoo on Dohee's hand mysteriously turns red. Gu Wan explains he saved her to protect his special tattoo. When Do He worries about his injuries, he magically heals himself, revealing to her that he's a powerful demon. But since the tattoo is transferred to Do He, he can only make use of his power when he is close to her. Later, Do He reports the acid attack to the police. They tell her the acid could have seriously harmed her, and she's lucky to be okay. Given the attack on the beach and now this acid incident, the detectives wonder why someone would want to harm her so much. While Do He talks to the police, a strange woman tries to warn Do Wan about incoming danger. However, he ignores her because of her abnormal appearance. After Do He finishes giving her statement, Gu Wan drives her home. On the way home, Do He suggests that Gu Wan becomes her bodyguard to stay close and protect her and the important tattoo. However, Gu Wan turns down the offer, thinking it's beneath him. He then drops her off and returns to his lavish yet ancient-looking apartment. Later that night, Do He watches the news and recognizes the company's finance head, Mr. Cha, as the man who had phoned her. The news reports that the finance head was accused of embezzlement and committed suicide. Concerned, Do He calls Grandma Chun Suk to check on the company. Chun Suk is surprised by Mr. Cha's death, but reassures Do He that everything is under control. After the call, Chun Suk instructs her secretary to gather news articles about Mr. Cha's death and the company's financial statements for the last decade. Chun Suk carefully reviews the statements and discovers something alarming. We then see her confronting a mysterious man in a leather jacket, accusing him of crossing the line and being involved in a murder. The man leaves silently, but clearly infuriated. The next morning, Gu Wan wakes up feeling positive. He tells Bo Yu that he can retrieve his tattoo by recreating the situation from the night he lost it. Suddenly, his fingers catch fire, causing chaos. This only indicates that he's combusting soon if he fails to find human souls and make a contract with them. Now terrified, Gu Wan agrees to be Do He's bodyguard. He takes her to a rooftop, claiming it's the best spot to find desperate people who want nothing more than to fulfill their current needs. 
Just then, they hear a mother's plea for her dying child. Guan brings Dohi along to a hospital to make a deal with the desperate mom. He then pressures the distressed mom into making a deal. The mom agrees to trade her soul and go to hell to save her child. Seeing this, Dohi is disgusted that Guan takes advantage of people's desperation to survive. In frustration, she fires him as her bodyguard and walks away. Later that night, Gu Wan tells Bo Kyu that he believes Do He will come around when she's in danger again. In return, Bo Kyu shares details about the night Gu Wan lost his powers. Since it was the night of a full moon, they would have to wait until another full moon to get the powers back. This means they have to wait 28 more days for Gu Wan to attempt to get his tattoo from Do He. The next day, Do He struggles to concentrate at work, haunted by Gu Wan's deal with the desperate mom. Meanwhile, her secretary, Shin, works on finding bodyguards for her. Later, Do He is surprised to find Gu Wan waiting outside her car, ready to be her bodyguard. The two then talk about why they changed their minds. Do He is curious about Gu Wan's life, while for Gu Wan, Do He is the only option to get his power back. While they chat, Do He receives a message from Grandma Chian Suk. In the message, Chun Suk expresses love for Do He and says it's her time to go. Do He thinks it's another prank by her grandma, but she asks Gu Wan to drive to her place. Sadly, this time it is not a prank. Do He finds her grandma dead in her beloved greenhouse. Devastated, she pleads with Gu Wan to save her, but he explains he can't bring the dead back to life. The scene shifts to Chun Suk's funeral where her children pretend to be miserable while praying their respects. Dohi soon surprisingly learns that Grandma had ordered the formation of an audit team right before her death. However, something very urgent came up, so it was put on hold. Guan then offers Dohi some wine and listens as she talks about her grandma. She shares a belief that people wear black at funerals to prevent the deceased spirit from following them home. Hearing this, Dohi becomes upset since she's wearing black to say goodbye to her grandma. To comfort her, Gu Wan uses his powers to change the color of her dress from black to white. During this moment, a butterfly appears in front of Dohi, which she believes to be her grandma's spirit. Dohi then expresses gratitude to the old lady for helping her when her parents died and hopes to meet again in their next lives. Afterward, the detectives reveal that Chun Suk had taken diclofenic before her death, a drug she was allergic to. Do He finds this suspicious, so she connects it to the finance head Mr. Cha's death, the emergency audit, and the attacks on her life. However, Chun Suk's son, Suk Min, and the family insist on keeping the true cause of death a secret to avoid negative consequences for the company's stock price. Do He confronts the family about it and reveals to everyone that her grandma was possibly murdered. Soon after, the family lawyer starts reading the will left behind by Chun Suk, revealing the old lady's bequests. The real estate goes to Han Sarong Welfare Foundation, while the Mirai Group's management rights, shares of its affiliates, and everything else goes to none other than her cherished granddaughter, Do He. Suk Min and the rest of the family are shocked, but Do He is even more surprised when she learns about the condition attached to her new responsibilities. She must get married within a year or everything will go to the Han Sarong Welfare Foundation. It's also revealed that to help her family cope with this last surprise, Grandma Chun Suk left letters for her children. She has criticized how money has made Suk Min and the family heartless. After the hearing, Su An loses her composure and attempts to attack Do He, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Do He approaches Gu Wan and takes the daring step to propose to him. Unfortunately, he turns her down, surprising her. Gu Wan explains that he is her bodyguard and wants to keep work and personal life separate. He then drives her home safely. After he leaves, Do He realizes she's alone for the first time in 17 years. Before she can process her feelings, notifications about her rejected proposal pop up, making her all the more depressed. She later meets Do Wan and demands an honest answer about why he rejected her marriage proposal. 
Gu Wan insists he wants to stay single, and though he claims to feel the same, but she's certainly embarrassed. Gu Wan points out she could have asked any man, but chose him, so he wants to know why. The two continue to bicker about the proposal until Do He angrily walks away. Do Wan suggests giving her a ride, expressing concern about another potential attack. During the ride, Do He reflects on life and why we often feel sad. She believes it's because many of us seek happiness in things that turn out to be fake. She shares about her late parents to Do Wan and how they died in a terrible car accident. Do He also reveals that she turned to work to avoid feeling sad, guilty, and self-pity. She eventually falls asleep in the car. Quietly, Gu Wan places Chun Suk's letter, which she left at the funeral, in her bag before waking her up. They bid each other good night when they arrive at the apartment door. Do He then adds Gu Wan as an emergency contact on her phone so that it would be easy to call him in case of danger. After he leaves, she reads Grandma Chun Suk's letter which understandably brings tears to her eyes. In the letter, Grandma apologizes for leaving Do He alone to deal with challenges and encourages her to find someone to ease her loneliness, just like she used to when she was alive. Grandma Chun Suk also urges Do He to give up if it becomes too overwhelming to handle the company herself and to save herself. Do He recalls the memories with her grandma and reflects upon her words. The following day, Suk Min refuses to allow Do He to perform a post-mortem on his mother's body. When she protests, Su An slaps her angrily. Despite the humiliation, Do He vows to uncover the truth and honor her grandma. In the meantime, the leader of the mafia gang, whose boss was murdered by Do Wan, is determined to find and make him pay. Do He returns to work while Gu Wan assists her. Our demon, who was once a human, somehow starts to remember more about his human life. He shares this realization with Bok Yu, who is worried because the return of these memories means Gu Wan is slowly becoming more human, meaning he is losing his immortality. This concerns Gu Wan, so he decides to stay close to Do He to recharge himself by touching the tattoo on her wrist. Do He soon notices Gu Wan acting differently and is shocked to learn that he's using her as a charger. She doesn't let him hold her hands. Their argument back and forth continues till their ride back home. During this time, the mysterious woman from earlier, who had warned Do Wan about imminent bad luck, sees them again. She continues to warn him cryptically, mentioning that good times are short lived. The following day, Do He plans to go on a blind date set up by her secretary Shin with a man she was supposed to meet on the first day. Shin also informs her about obtaining CCTV footage from Grandma Chun Suk's house. Do He, with the help of a reluctant Gu Wan, goes through the footage and considers using his powers to find the killer. Gu Wan then makes her promise to help him get his tattoo back after finding the killer. He also convinces her to let him recharge anytime, anywhere. They sadly learn that Gu Wan is unable to use his power to find the killer because he never saw the perpetrator's face due to his mask. Meanwhile, a man in a leather jacket visits Chun Suk's office and recalls their last conversation. In a flashback, we see that Grandma Chun Suk was disappointed in this man, mentioning how the apple never falls far from the tree. Before he left the place, he secretly swapped her medications. Back in the present, Do He realizes too late that someone has obtained the main CCTV footage of her grandma's house before her. She also learns that her grandma's laptop has been wiped clean, further stressing her suspicions. After work, Do He and Gu Wan attend the company team dinner. Our handsome demon, who needs to recharge every now and then, repeatedly tries to hold Do He's hand, catching everyone's attention. He also refuses to drink as he's still on duty, while the others enjoy themselves. When everyone else is drunk, one of the colleagues questions why Gu Wan rejected Do He. Gu Wan confesses that he likes her, but humorously adds that liking pork doesn't mean marrying a pig. His response upsets Do He, so she angrily leaves the table. Just then, the Mafia gang shows up and confronts Do Wan for their boss's death. A fight soon breaks out, and a powerless Gu Wan gets seriously injured. In the meantime, Do He frantically searches for him and tries to ring him. 
she eventually finds him about to be beaten to death. Seeing his pitiful condition, Dohee courageously steps in to protect him, using pepper spray against all the attackers. Gu Wan, moved by her willingness to defend him, grabs her wrist and asks if she knows how to tango. Confused, Dohee questions why, and Gu Wan explains that in tango, partners must trust each other. While this is happening, a mysterious man takes pictures of Gu Wan miraculously healing his wounds after holding Dohee's hands. Our hero then uses his power to lighten up the streetlights and magically makes the mafia gang dance to music. He and Dohee also join the dance while, at the same time, he swiftly takes care of the attackers. The show ends with Gu Wan holding Dohee close and looking into her eyes as he wonders if he has fallen for her.